we thank the Lord, we give Him praise, we give Him glory, we give Him honor for everything. May His name be forever glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for His sustaining grace that allows us to gather and learn at His feet once again this week. His name is worthy of our praise. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your presence, for your power, for the privileges we enjoy in you. Baba, be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. It is time, O oh Lord, to hear from you. Speak to us directly from your throne. Speak to us. Let us understand you better than ever before. Thank you, Father. Speak to us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Last week, under the topic, Spiritual Maturity Matters, Spiritual Maturity Matters, we explored how maturity among the Christian brethren, the, Corinth, the Christian brethren in Corinth, influenced their use of spiritual gifts. We also examined the call for every believer to grow in maturity, ensuring their gifts serve God's purpose, God's purpose, and edify others. May God help us not to only remember these timely and timeless lessons, but also be able to apply them I also be able to apply them in our daily lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Today's topic, Holy Spirit doesn't operate in confusion. Holy Spirit doesn't operate in confusion. It reminds us of the character of God's Spirit. The character, major character of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit functions with other clarity and purpose. Other clarity and purpose we shall be exploring the book of first corinthians chapter 14 from 32 forward verses 32 forward this is what we are going to be exploring by the grace of god whether in worship service or fellowship our god giving gifts will be used in an orderly way and this must reflect the nature of the giver god by spirit in his son jesus christ the holy spirit never works in chaos or disorder his ways are systematic and peaceful systematic peaceful because he is the god of order he is the god of order he never does anything in chaos because it's never chaotic may the lord grant us the grace to walk in his spirit and serve him in harmony and order so we do not falter in jesus name amen let us begin by reading our memory scripture that is taken from first corinthians chapter 13 uh, chapter 14 verse 33 sorry first corinthians chapter 14 verse number 33 i read for god is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. What does it mean? Why will God enshrine such a powerful scripture for us in our Bible? Why? What does it mean? God is, God is a God of peace and order, not confusion. A God, God is not a God of confusion. Everything he does, from creation to redemption, is marked by purpose and organization. Chaos and disorder come from the devil. He is the master of chaos. He is the master of lies. He is the master of deceit. He is the master of uh, confusion. He is the master of disorder, whose goal is to divide and disrupt the people of God. He uses the instrument of chaos and uh, disorder. We must know this. And that's why Paul would say we shouldn't be ignorant of the wise of the devil. Where the Holy Spirit is at work, there is peace, unity, and direction. As believers, we must avoid the rivalry, jealousy, and misuse of spiritual gifts, which can lead to confusion. Hmm. Instead, we are called to promote harmony and order in our worship and fellowship. Meanwhile, let's look at some of the main points 
in this memory scripture. God, God's orderliness in creature, creation. God has been orderly. We have said that in creation. Genesis chapter 1, verses uh, 1 forward makes it very clear. God's creation enshrined in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 is a model of uh, order and purpose. Everything was created with intention and followed a systematic process. Everything God created was created with intention, was created systematically, and to follow a systematic pro process. And that's why we need to ask this question. How does the order we see in creation inspire us to ensure our worship and service to God reflect that same order? If God followed order, if God was systematic in creation, uh -uh, from the first to the seventh day, uh -uh, then uh, uh, doesn't that uh, send us a message? Doesn't that ring a bell to us concerning the uh, what he expects our services to be? The Holy Spirit brings unity, not chaos. Hmm. On the day of Pentecost, that's Acts chapter 2, from verses 1 forward, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was marked by unity. From verse 1, they were united, they were together in the same place. Everyone was together in one place. And this unity allowed the Holy Spirit to walk. They were united. They were not in chaos. They were not divided. Since the Holy Spirit walks where there is unity, how can we promote unity in our worship services to ensure the Spirit can move freely among us? How do we promote unity? How can we promote unity? The, the Lord will be helping us to answer these questions in the course of the discussion today. Confusion is a sign of misalignment with the will of God. Confusion is a sign of misalignment with the uh, will of God. First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 26 to 33 reads in part. Let all things be done for edification. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the sea. Hmm. God is not the author of confusion. God does not champion confusion. Uh -uh. He will never champion confusion. He never champions confusion and he will never champion confusion. May the Lord help us as we, as we study and understand this great principle in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God desires peace and decency in worship. He desires peace and decency in worship. That's what, what 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40 says. Let all things be done decently and in order. Our worship should be characterized by reference, peace, and the structure. Reference, peace, and structure. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no disorderliness. Uh, so that is some services. Uh, the next person to come is not there yet. Uh, uh, it's like uh, it's like the people are not prepared. Ah, uh, we need. Uh, intervention we need to do the right thing this reflects god's nature and his desire for an orderly worship experience where there is a reference where there is peace where there is structure but we need to know this very clearly from that uh, memory scripture we can deduce the fact that the enemy thrives in chaos the devil our enemy thrives in chaos james chapter 3 verse 16 for where envy and self-seeking as is confusion and every, every evil Thing are there. The devil thrives in confusion, using it to cause division and strife among believers. And that's why we must work vehemently against him. That's why we must do everything to ensure that uh, the devil is not uh, taking advantage of us. Uh, it, it, the devil thrives in confusion, using it to cause division and strife among believers. Now, Take time to examine your own life for areas of disorder or confusion. Are there situations where you need to invite the Holy Spirit to bring peace and uh, structure? Uh, let's commit to promoting unity in our worship services by encouraging teamwork, respecting each member's role, and using our gift to build up the body of Christ. As we engage with others, Let's aim to reflect God's peace in our interactions, ensuring we are ambassadors of His order and harmony. So, dearly beloved, God is a God of peace. Once again, we're emphasizing that. And order and His Spirit operates in environments where there is harmony and unity. 
His spirit operates in environment where there is unity and harmony, confusion, chaos, and disorder have no place in the life of a believer or in the church where there is a where we allow the Holy Spirit to really take charge. Confusion, chaos, disorder have no place. Have no place at all. The question is, how can we contribute to making our churches a place where the Holy Spirit can operate freely in an environment of peace and order through the use of our spiritual gifts? How can we do that? This is what God is helping us to discover better in today's uh, discussion, in today's teaching. Meanwhile, you can reflect on this and share your thoughts in the comment section. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Meanwhile, here are a couple of thoughts we need to ponder as we start our lesson today. One, God is incomparably, incomparably organized. Our God is incomparably organized. His spirit won't stay where there is confusion. Uh -uh. The Holy Spirit does not stay where there is confusion. Uh, and so we need to organize our services orderly. This is what our memory scripture of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 emphasizes. Imagine a room with too many voices all speaking or trying to speak at the same time. It will be difficult to understand anything where everybody is talking. Everybody is talking at the same time. You are talking, he's talking, she's talking, they are talking, everybody is talking. Uh -uh. You, you won't be able to make any meaningful thing out of such discussion because. Uh, <laughs> Hey, every that is what that's what is called confusion, confusion, confusion. God is a God of peace and order. If we want the Holy Spirit to move powerfully in our services, we need to create an environment, an atmosphere that honors His nature. And what's His nature? Organized and peaceful. The Lord is in His house. Let there be solemnness, and not just anybody doing anything anyhow. Can you imagine the service is on and uh, even some ministers, the service is on and the answer will be ringing and, they, and then they will be picking it and making calls during the service. Ah, uh -uh. I went way out of a situation where a minister was ministering. It was on the people to minister, you know, and the answer to that, the, end, the next thing we do is, uh, sorry, people of God, I have a message. And he picked his answer to, yes, who is it? I am on the pulpit ministering. Call me back in the... Uh, Few minutes time. Ah, oh my God! Thank God, God is uh, gracious. Ah, if it could have been in the Old Testament period, uh, you imagine what would have happened to such. What worse than what happened to Nadab and Abihu would have happened to such a pastor, such a minister. Uh, confusion contradicts the nature and attributes of God. Confusion only sets in when we misuse our God-given gifts contrary to His will. Confusion. Uh, think about a time when there was a lot of confusion in the meeting or gathering. Yes. How did it affect the experience for everyone involved in the meeting? Uh -uh. Everybody is talking indistinctly. You are talking, you are talking, you are talking, you are talking. Some people are discussing. Yes, some people are discussing. Can you imagine why the message is going on in the church and some people will gather somewhere, sometimes outside the church, sometimes in the vestry, and they'll be discussing. And the someone is going on. The service is going on. Uh -uh. Such persons, uh, they, they, of course, they don't honor God. They don't honor God at all. That's too bad. That's not what should be had among people, mature Christians. Mature Christians. That shouldn't be the case. Uh, and uh, God is going to help us to, do, to declare the fact that God, that it doesn't exist in confusion, but in orderliness. It does, whatever you have, disorder, God is not there. Uh -uh. God is not there actively. Is there positively to just watch them and uh, pity them because they are losing a lot? That's why we'll be exploring two main points today. Two main points. Number one, Holy Spirit is orderly. Number two, call to orderliness in worship. Holy Spirit is orderly. Call to orderliness in worship. Let's enter into the discussion today. The discussion of today's lesson proper, which focuses on uh, the team. Holy Spirit doesn't operate in confusion. Don't forget that. Holy Spirit. Does not operate in confusion. We'll explore what it means for the Holy Spirit to bring order, not chaos, to our lives and spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit brings order. It brings peace. It, it, it brings a structure. 
uh, not chaos. Anywhere there is a disorder, where there is chaos, where there is a no structure, anywhere that is not organized cannot be the work of the Holy Spirit. It cannot be the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. Including even in your home, dear sister, dear brother, even in your home, in cases where you are not organized, everything is just anywhere, anyhow. It will take you one million years for you to search and get what you thought you kept or what you thought you kept on the table. Uh -uh. It will take one million one years for you to discover it. That is not the work of the Holy Spirit. Too. It shows you you are not at it shows that you are not allowed the Holy Spirit to help you to be organized. Division one, Holy Spirit is orderly. Holy Spirit is orderly. First Corinthians chapter 40, 14, verses 32 and 33 is a point of call. I read here, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as it is in all the churches of the saints. In these verses, I've just read the verses 32 and 33 of 1 Corinthians 14. Paul reminds us that the Holy Spirit operates within order. He operates within order and operates with order. It doesn't push believers into chaos or loss of control. Mm -mm. Instead, the Holy Spirit brings peace and unity just as God intends for his church. God intends that his church be orderly, be structured, be organized. Uh, that is the that is the program of God. It doesn't God is not interested in uh, lack of structural disorganization. Uh -uh. Disorderliness is not interested in it, doesn't love it. How does this the, the idea that the spirit of prophets are subject to the prophets affect the way we understand spiritual gift today? How? A lot of people they believe when they are exercising their gift, they cannot be controlled. Uh uh, is that don't quench the Holy Spirit? Is that what the scripture says? Don't quench the spirit. Don't quench the spirit. Don't quench the spirit. Uh -uh. That's not what the spirit is saying. That's not what the Lord of the, 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 the word of God is saying. No, don't quench the spirit. Uh -huh. And so what? Don't quench the spirit. Don't quench the spirit. Does, does it mean because we shouldn't quench the spirit? You have to do things in chaos. Talk anyhow. Uh, yes, you are a prophet. Uh, you are prophesying. You want to teach. Uh, if you are prophesying and another person is teaching at the same time, another person is, is uh, evangelizing at the same time, another person is uh, doing this uh, counseling at the same time, uh, uh, in the, at the same time, then that is called chaos. That's confusion. First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 32 to 33 teaches us that God values peace and order in his workings. The spirit does not cause disorder. Note that. Disorder is not what comes from the Holy Spirit. Instead, he aligns with believers, he aligns believers with the will of God and encourages harmony, not confusion or chaos. Note that. He aligns believers with the will of God and also encourages harmony, encourages unity, encourages oneness, not confusion and chaos. chaos confusion, chaos can never be the work of the devil. Wherever it is found, look at it well. It is, a, it is uh, some people cooperating with the devil. That are bringing about confusion and chaos. What is the meaning of confusion in the scripture? James chapter 3, verse 16 says, For where envy and self seeking as if confusion and every evil there uh, and, and every evil thing are there. Where envy and self seeking, look at that. Envy and self seeking exist. Envy, selfishness, where there is confusion and everything. Every evil thing are there. James tells us that confusion is a result of selfishness. Confusion comes from selfishness and envy. When we operate from a place of competition or rivalry, uh, I want them to know that I'm the best teacher. I want them to know that I can prophesy well. I want them to know that uh, when I speak, I counsel well. Uh, uh, that's competition. That's rivalry in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, ha, when we operate from a place of competition or every, we invite confusion into our lives and churches. The Holy Spirit does not encourage such behavior. Rather, it leads us to work together in unity, in harmony. The Holy Spirit does not work, uh, does not encourage uh, confusion. It does not encourage rivalry. It does not encourage competitive spirit, so to say, competition in the church, competition. Ha, 
Hey, what is confusion itself? Meanwhile, have you ever seen and seen every or selfishness cause confusion in the church setting? What was the outcome? Please, if you have had such an experience, share it in the comment section. Let us learn from you. Let's learn from you. Have you ever seen any uh, seen envy or selfishness cause confusion in a church setting? In a church setting, what's the outcome? Confusion, according to the Greek word, it means instability. It means disturbance. It means being out of control. That is confusion. This is the opposite of the Holy Spirit walk, which is always characterized by peace, order, and unity. Peace, order, unity. Also, sanity. That these are the characteristics of the work of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not overpower believers, making them lose control or awareness. This is very, this point is very important. Today, a lot of people believe that uh, when you are prophesying, uh, when you are prophesying, you don't know what is around you, so you can't be controlled. Even when the bell is rung, uh, you still continue to talk and talk and talk and talk. And, hey, you are not allowing the Spirit of God to talk. You are not allowing the Spirit of God to talk. Abba, Abba. The Holy Spirit is not the Spirit of confession. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 32. And the Spirit of the prophets are subject to prophets. The Holy Spirit does it to overpower believers, making them lose control or awareness at all. Instead, he influences, I mean, his influence brings the believer under self control and awareness. And it allows them to function with clarity and purpose. Clarity and purpose, not an uh, indistinct uh, 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 statements pam, 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 that, are, that are not coordinated, just saying bala blue, saying nonsense. No, 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 that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. What does it mean that the Holy Spirit does not cause loss of control in a believer's actions or behavior? Ah, uh ah. -uh. When some people claim to be prophesying, the way they move up and down, the way they, they move back and forth, and uh, people will be guarding them as if, uh, as if uh, these traditionalists are in their, in their uh, shrines, guarding them who, who, who in the church. Ah, uh ah. -uh. <laughs> what does it mean that the Holy Spirit does not cause loss of control in a believer's actions or behavior? The Holy Spirit works in partnership with the believer, guiding and influencing, but never forcing them to behave in a chaotic or, non or uncontrolled manner. Ah, uh -uh. dearly beloved sister, dearly beloved brother, every time you have to prophesy, you everywhere have to be scattered. Habba, which can spirit be this now? Which can spirit? Every time you prophesy, chairs in the church, tables, everything, everywhere must have to be scattered. They will have to be running after you as you are disturbing everywhere. Uh, uh, can that be the spirit of God? The Holy Spirit is not the spirit of confusion. No. Not the spirit of confusion. God is the source of all gifts. We need to know that and understand that very clearly. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 6 says, Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Look at Paul. Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I planted. Paul made it clear to these people. Ah, don't uh, defy me, oh. I am not God, though. Neither should you defy Apollos. Neither should you defy Capers. Huh. Every spiritual gift has a purpose, and all gifts are designed to work together for the same goal. And what's that goal? To edify the body of Christ and give glory to God. To edify the body of Christ, to glorify God Himself. If your gift is not doing that, then that gift has problem. Is that, that no, the gift cannot have problem? If it's the gift of God, that means the gifted has problem. Has problem. The gifts are not meant for rivalry or, or comparison, but to bring believers closer to God and uh, closer together and complement one another. It is not for all to be compared. Ah, if you see, brother, so when, when he handles this, handles with the mic and sings, oh God, ah, I prefer him to sing. Go, ah, ah, when pastor, pastor, so 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 preaches, ah, I like his teaching. 
I like his teaching. But you know, it's rather than the, the second pastor. Ah, a lot always want to sit under this pastor. The gifts of God in our lives are not meant for comparison. They are not to show I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. Oh, that is not the essence of the gift of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 forward, we see that no gift of praise are independently of others. No. We all need one another. As each gift contributes to the whole, we all need one another. Your gift is not to be operated in isolation. Mba, mba, mba. Your gift to bring glory to God and edify the body of Christ. The root of confusion in gift use. The way people use gift today in some places, it happened among the Corinthian brethren. Is that happening today? Confusion arises when we allow unhealthy comparisons, rivalry, or misuse of spiritual gifts. That's when confusion sets in. You know, this is not the spirit's work, but the work of the flesh and ungodliness. When we allow unhealthy comparison, all because we think we are better than others in the use of our gifts, then uh -huh, chaos comes in. What? Why do you think rivalry and comparing spiritual gifts can lead to confusion in the church of God? Why do you think it? Please answer. Give your own answer in the comment section. When we compare gifts with, when we compare gifts, we elevate some and devalue others, and this leads to division and disunity. This creates an environment where chaos and I mean where chaos can thrive, and instead of a unity and peace. It, it creates an environment where chaos thrives. And where chaos thrives, there cannot be unity and peace. But we need to know very clearly that God values peace, not chaos. God values peace, not chaos. So says 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but peace. But of peace, as in all the churches of the saints, God is not the author of confusion. He values peace. He values not uh, uh, being confused. He values organization. He values structure. God's actions always aim to promote peace, not chaos or confusion. Uh, whatever God does, whatever God gives, is not to prom promote chaos. It is to promote organization, structure. That's what God does. Confusion is a tool of the enemy, Satan. Who seeks to distort the truth and divide the body of Christ? The devil introduces confusion through unhealthy comparison of our gifts, through pride, through rivalry in the body of Christ. In uh, James chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. But if you are bitter envy and self seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. Satan uses envy and self-seeking attitudes to introduce confusion into our lives as churches. Our churches, if we are not very careful, it is the it is a uh, 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 devil's resolve, the devil's determination to make sure he introduces confusion. And we must be very careful lest we fall for him. No gift should be out of control. None. You are teaching daily, beloved, and you have been giving time. You are spending. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You now get to 30 minutes, it is then you now begin to say, Oh, I want to stop. But the Holy Spirit is not allowing me to stop. Oh, daily, beloved. You know, the Holy Spirit cannot be caged, it cannot be guard. Ah, uh ah. -uh. I want to stop. But the Holy Spirit is saying, Right on, right on, right on. That cannot be the Holy Spirit. That is your, that is your flesh talking. It cannot be the Holy Spirit. You have been giving a time, and you are working by that. By that time on the cookie, you get that you begin to say that the Holy Spirit said you should not stop. The Holy Spirit cannot tell you not to stop at that junction. Ah, uh, let's let's stop deceiving ourselves. How can we ensure our gifts remain under the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Gifts exercise in a way that causes destruction, confusion, or a lack of order are not controlled by the Holy Spirit. We should submit our gifts to God. We should ensure they are used for His glory and in harmony. Others. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of order, not confusion. Where God's spirit is at work, 
there will be peace. There will be peace. There will be unity. There will be sanctity. There will be clarity. <laughs> Confusion arises when we allow every misuse of gifts or, or uncontrolled of God for the church. Let us strive to operate in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, promoting harmony and give to build up the body of Christ. May God help us as we do this with the help of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Let us close this section with this question. How can we ensure that the gifts God has given us are used in an orderly, controlled way that promotes peace and unity in our churches? How can we ensure that? This is what God wants us to do. This is what God wants us wants to happen. Anytime we come together in our churches, anytime we attend, we are there for our worship services, anytime we use our gifts, this is what God wants to happen, that uh, we use the gifts in an orderly, controlled way that promotes peace and unity in our churches. So how? Please drop your comment in the comment section. Um, Division 2, call to orderliness in worship. Call to orderliness in worship. We're still on the book of uh, First Corinthians chapter 14. And this time around, we'll be going through 26 to 40. Chapter 26, uh, chapter 14, verses 26 to 40. Let me quickly read First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. This verse gives us the foundation for this second section of today's lesson. Paul is urging us to ensure that everything we do in our worship services is conducted with respect, structure, and decency. That's what he's telling us. This, this, this must be uh, held onto, yes, with uh, effectiveness. Whatever we do in our worship services, you know, our worship services are uh, uh, a demonstration of a manifestation of our gifts, our giftings. Okay, God is bringing us together to exercise our gifts. So, in doing that, we should conduct ourselves with respect, structure, and decency. May God help us in Jesus' name. Paul's rebuke to the Corinthians. Let's look at that in First Corinthians chapter four, uh, chapter twelve, verses one forward. Paul gives a sharp rebuke to the Corinthians. For their disorderly conduct during worship. They thought that uh, during worship, everybody has to exercise his gift at the same time, regardless of the disorderliness. The church was chaotic with people competing to show off their spiritual gift. You are coming to church. That you have that gift. I want to show mine. He wants to show his. She wants to show us. They want to show theirs. So it was a terrible situation. This disorganization was preventing the proper functioning of the body of Christ. In fact, it was preventing uh, uh, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in its true self. Without clear principles for orderliness in worship. How does this kind of disorder manifest in modern day uh, church settings? How? If you know, let us know. Comment. Answer in the comment section. How can we avoid it? Drop your answers in the comment section, please. Please, we want to learn from you. Order in the exercise of our gift. We need it. We need order as we exercise our gift. Verses 26 to 32 of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Paul emphasizes that when believers gather for worship, there needs to be order in the exercise of gift. Order. Not just claiming that uh, uh, spiritual gift. I, I want to use my gift. I want to use my gift. So everything is disorganized in the church. No, no, no. Ah, God does not want it that way. He wants solemnness in his in his church. When we come together, there should be solemnness. Ah, ah, we should do everything with respect. We should do everything with clarity. We should do everything with structure. We should do everything with sanity. That's when we are fulfilling the desire of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20, the scripture says, How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a sound, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. That was the case with the Corinthian church and his churches today. Everyone cannot be speaking at the, at the same time. 
everyone cannot be praying at the same time, prophesying at the same time, or performing healings during the service. Ah uh ah, -uh. why did you? You know, <laughs> sometimes in some fellowship, uh, some brothers because they want to show that they are spirit gym gym. It is when the sermon is going on that they be going about roko raka kaka ruku kuku yaka yaka yuku 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 yeke yeke yuku yuku. It is when that, that that's when they be raka karu koko in about. When others are praying, that is when they carry the Bible. Say, oh wow, oh what a deep revelation! Hallelujah! So kochaka, so kochaka. That is nothing but nonsense. It is nothing but a display of pride. You want to you want to show that you are spirit gym gym than others. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. God does not want that. Everybody cannot be speaking in tongues at the same time. Everybody praying, everybody, everybody prophesying at the same time, everybody performing healing at the same time. Then there'll be confusion. And God does not want confusion to happen in this church. The goal of the use of a gift is education. What is that? The building up of the church, not a spectacle or competition. Uh -huh. When we are using a gift in the church, it is not like you are watching a football match or you are watching relay race in the stadium. No. It is not for competition. We are to complement ourselves. Complement ourselves with our gifts. When was the last time you saw a church service become chaotic? When? <laughs> if you have seen one before, maybe you shared with us. So, uh, what can... What can we do to ensure that all things, all gifts, spiritual gifts, are used in an orderly manner? What can we do? Now, let's ask, answer this question. Does Paul command women to remain silent in church services? This has caused a lot of uh, brouhaha in some settings. He said, uh, Paul said, they claim that uh, Paul said, women, They claim that Paul said women should keep silent and so women should not minister in church. <laughs> Is that what Paul said? Verse 34 of the same 1 Corinthians chapter 34. Let your women keep silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak but they are to be submissive as the law also says. Okay. <laughs> this is the verse that has called confusion. No, it's on Sakuso. This verse is often misunderstood and has been misunderstood by a lot of people. Paul is not making a blanket statement prohibiting women from speaking or using their gifts in the church. Note that. He's not making a blanket statement. Instead, he was addressing a specific issue in the Corinthian church where some women were causing disruption and disorder during the services. And so, it was not about the worth or, or value of women, but about maintaining order. Get that. Paul was not really talking about the worth or value of women. Maybe uh, women should preach or should not preach. Uh -uh. That was not what he was saying here. But his main focus was maintaining order in the body of Christ. Please note. His main uh, uh, argument was, maintain order in the body of Christ. Not that women should preach or not preach in the body of Christ. It was because the women there, the women there were disrupting uh, the service. They were causing disorder because uh, this one is prophesying. This, at the same time, this one is speaking in tongues and they are stopping him. He's, he's not, this one is stopping her. She's not ready to stop. He said, no, you cannot quite the spirit. The spirit must talk. Oh, he must talk. Oh, ah, ah. Are you the Holy Spirit? Paul also found the importance of women in ministry. Women in ministry in the book of Romans chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. If you read those two uh, verses, you will see the women, some of the women in, in Paul's ministry. He acknowledges the role of Phoebe, a dickiness in the church. The issue was one of disorder and inappropriate behavior, not a prohibition of women's role in the church. Paul was not trying to prohibit the role of women, the ministry of women in the church. He was only saying, let there be order in the church. Even where men are causing order, they should be called to order. Where they are causing disorder, they should be called to order. They should be called to order, not women alone. So the focus of Paul here is not whether women or men, uh, sorry, whether women should minister or not in the church, but order. 
order, order in the church. So, brethren, tongues shouldn't be used as a mark of spiritual superiority. Hey, today, if you cannot speak in tongues in some circles, ah, you are a chicken Christian. You are a baby Christian. If you cannot speak in tongues, you are a baby Christian. No, you, are, you must be able to speak in tongues for hours. You must be able to speak in tongues. Three hours, you are still continuing. May God save us. May God save us. In Corinth, some believers were using the gift of tongues as a sign of superior, superior spirituality. And it is happening in some places again today. Paul's command in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 39 and 40 focuses on not allowing any spiritual gift to be a source of division or competition in church. Your gift should not be a sort of competition. Uh -uh. You shouldn't be competing with others. We are not there to compete. We are there to complement, to do the will of God, to edify the body of Christ and glorify God. Verses 36 and 37 say, or oh, did the word of God come originally from you? Or was it you only that it, it reached? If anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I wrote to you are commandments of the Lord. Paul's purpose is not to restrict gifts, but to ensure they are exercised for the benefit of the entire church. Paul was not out to restrict gifts and don't use this, don't uh, prophesy and don't speak it out. No, that was all Paul was, what Paul was saying. No, but it was time to say, uh -uh, let there be order in the body of Christ. Use it for the benefit of the body of Christ and for the glorification of God Himself. Not as a display of personal superiority. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Not to show that you are spirit gym gym than others. Mm -mm. That's, not the, that's not the reason for exercise of gift. To, uh, whatever God has given to you, thank God for it. He has given also to others some things he has not given to you. You cannot have all the gifts. You won't have all the gifts. Uh -uh. What he has given you, he has given you. So what he has given you, so why do why exercising it as if uh, you are the owner? You are not the owner. Go and read First Corinthians chapter four verse seven. Apostle Paul made it very clear: you are not the owner. You are not the owner. It is a gift. You don't work for a gift. It's only reward you, you work for. You don't work. Gift is given by grace. It's what you don't deserve. It's given by unmerited favor. So if you are given the gift, then what should you claim as if uh, you are you are Lord? You are Lord. Of the gift. Uh -uh. May God help us to understand this better. Why do you think some people seek to elevate themselves through their spiritual gift? How can we ensure that our gifts are used for building up others and not for personal glory? Dearly beloved, wonderful prophet. Uh -uh. Thank God for the grace of God upon your life. But uh, because you are now a prophet, everybody must kneel down before you before they talk. Uh -uh. Oh, everybody must kneel down. Every whosoever, even those who are hold that, that who, who hold that, who are hold enough to be your own parents, they must kneel down. They must talk to you on their knees. Huh? Oh God! Even when your age want to serve you water, <laughs> they must kneel down to serve you water, and you until you you finish taking the water, they won't stand up. Oh! Wonderful assistant Jesus. Assistant Jesus, congratulations. Hey. Yeah. Okay. May the Lord help us. There's a the need for worship to be scripturally centered. Our worship services should be scripturally centered. And that's the emphasis in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 36 and 37, which reminds us that uh, all church services should be grounded in the scripture. Grounded in the word of God, the Bible, both in content and form. Uh, both in content and form. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, oh, both in content and form. A father in the Lord, the president of uh, somebody who was uh, in, in a service <laughs> and he wanted to raise offering. As he wanted to raise offering, he said, uh, Look at the 20 naira. The man in the 20 naira was put to shame. Uh -huh. So you are going to pray, God, I must not be put to shame. And so, don't bring 20 naira here. 
you must win nothing less than 50 100 naira ah 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 he wants you all you wanted is he wanted money 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 we have to be very careful what we say in our services uh offering terminate suffering who tells you that your offering will terminate your suffering who tells you that who tells you that is that scripture huh? so the, the, the things we say on the pulpit think uh, maybe uh, we, want, we want to we want to exaggerate we want to we want to put things in focus we have to be very careful Let's at the end of the day we are offending God and offending the people who are, we are sent to. Worship must be scripture based, both in content and form. In content and form, our practices during our services should be Bible based. Worship must not become a free for all, but must stay true to the teachings of the Bible. Not free for all. Everybody just talking anyhow, doing anything anyhow at the same time. Revelation chapter 2, verses 19 and 20 reminds us of the importance of staying aligned with the word of God and avoiding anything that might lead us away from the truth of the scripture, from the truth of the word of God. Our services should center on the word of God with every act of worship reflecting the will of God as revealed in his word. So every aspect of our worship should be aligned with the scripture. No unnecessary jokes. Ah, no unnecessary embellishment that does not give glory to God and that is not scriptural. No, you we won't say anything that is unscriptural because it is God in our presence. It is we uh, uh, sitting in the presence of God and in His presence, in His presence, there is fullness of joy. But if we are going to be part of that joy, we must maintain order, solemnness in His presence. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. There is therefore the call for peace, unity, and harmony. As believers, we must avoid being the source of confusion or disorder. If confusion or disorder will happen anywhere, not you, not myself. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Ah, uh ah, -uh, as it lies within your capacity. As it lies within your capacity. Uh, make sure you are at peace with all men, strive or pursue. Ensure, do everything within your capacity to be at peace with all men. My father and the Lord, my mentor, Pastor Esau Aluku, when he interpreted that place, oh, I cannot forget that interpretation. He said, the implication is, if there's going to be confusion, if there's going to be wahala anywhere, it shouldn't start with you. It shouldn't be, they shouldn't trace it and say, it started with this whole person. Uh -uh, not you, not you, not you. If there's going to be offense anywhere, you shouldn't be the cause of your offense. That's what it says. Abaku chapter 2 verse 20 says, For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let the earth keep silence before him. That should be our logo. Sorry, that should be our motto in our services. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. No talking anyhow. No do anything. Everything anyhow. Our conduct should promote peace, unity, and harmony in the church. Reflecting the orderliness of the Holy Spirit. Our conduct should promote what? Peace, unity, and harmony. Not disorderliness. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1, we, we, the, 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 the word of God says, we should walk prudently when we go into the house of the Lord. It not just to approach God's house with reverence and order. When coming to the presence of the Lord, coming to the house of the Lord, we must remember, go and read Revelation chapter 4. From verse 1. Look at those things in the presence of the Lord. You will know that the presence of the Lord is very awesome. It's not where you talk anyhow. It's not where you walk anyhow. Ah, ah. I've learned this from my father, my mentor. Ah, ah you see, some ministers, ah, they, they know they are late to church. And they will still come from the rear. They, 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 they come from the rear and they pass through the church. The middle of the congregation like that, even while the message is going on, to, to go to the, into the chancel. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, we need to respect God now. Can't you go through the back door? You are late already. And then going through the back door so that you don't cause, the, you, you don't cause distraction. Father, the Lord has told us that when you come into the chancel, ministers, we should stop on necessary greeting because that will cause distraction among the congregation. It will cause distraction. 
So what? They, they, there must be that structure. There must be that respect. There must be that uh, that uh, there must be that uh, 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 regard for the presence of the Lord. When we are coming into the presence of the Lord, let's walk prudently when we go into the house of the Lord. That's what the Ecclesiastes chapter five verse one says. We approach the house of God with reverence and order. I should know that I'm going into the presence of the house of God. I should know that I'm going into the presence of the God of gods, of the King of kings, the King, the King of the universe. I am going into the presence of the sovereign one who does and uh, uh, who can do and undo. Go read uh, Psalm 115 and 3. You don't come into his presence anyhow. You don't do what you like in his presence. You don't do it anyhow. He is God. And we have to be very careful the way we come into his presence. So, what practical steps can we take to ensure that we are not sources of confusion, but contributors to peace and order in our worship? The Holy Spirit works in an atmosphere of peace, unity, and order. If we are to experience the full power of God in our worship, we must commit to maintaining order and decorum in all we do. As we exercise our spiritual gifts, let's ensure that we do so with love with humility and a desire to build up the body of Christ, to build up the church and to glorify God. May we never be a cause of confusion, but always a source of peace and harmony in the house of God in Jesus' name. Let us pray for grace to align our worship with the will of God in all situations. Dearly beloved, God has spoken to us, number one, that uh, he gives the right of gifts for mutual respect, honor, and peace. Not for competition or self glorification mm -mm, mm -mm. all gifts are equal all gifts are equal and number two the holy spirit only operates where there's unity and orderliness it will operate where there's unity Acts chapter 2 verses 1 forward makes that very clear in, in first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 Paul says now i plead with you brethren by the name of the lord jesus christ that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, that um, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Why the Holy Spirit only operates where there is a unity, peace, orderliness. Use your gift to promote unity and order in the body of Christ. Use it, use it. Let me give you this illustration. What's upon the time? A group of devoted believers regularly gather to pray and worship, basking, rejoicing in the love, unity, and joy and peace they enjoy in their coming together. Unfortunately, one of the Corinthians allowed Satan to influence her, leading her to gossip about the choir leader. She falsely claimed that the choir leader was better suited for the ushering department instead of singing. This gossip caused division and ultimately drove the choir leader out of the church. The chorister took her place. But some members loyal to the former leader left the church. This caused disunity, envy, hatred, division to, the, uh, to, uh, to fester in the congregation. Dearly beloved, when disunity and confusion take root, it disrupts the peace and unity, peace and harmony in the body of Christ. Such actions not only arm individuals involved, but also in the, the Holy Spirit to work in the midst of God's people. So, how can we guard against gossip and division in the body of Christ? So that we ensure that our actions promote unity rather than discord. Dearly beloved, jealousy, envy, and unnecessary comparison are tools used by the devil to chase away the Holy Spirit from the church. Hmm and uh, scatter the brethren out of the will of God and the presence of God. Where there is love, unity, and harmony, and orderliness, God's mighty hand moves for great signs and wonders. Are uh, and this is accompanied by outstanding testimonies. That's why in Psalm 133, lines 1 to 3, the scripture says, How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the Precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the beard, on the edge of his garment. It is like the dew of Ammon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Life forevermore. With this scripture, we close for today. Psalm 133, lines 1 to 3. Let us use our gift 
to glorify the Lord and to edify the body, causing unity in the body of Christ. Let us pray. Say, Lord, help me to remain united. Help us all to remain united in your body, body, guiding us in using our gift to bring peace and order in our churches in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to, us to united. remain united in the name of Jesus. To bring peace Not to and use order our gifts to bring peace and order in to the body of Jesus Christ, Lord. Name, we are praying. Amen. Let us say, God, Father, protect us from jealousy and division in our churches. Protect our churches from Jesus. jealousy and division. Let's open up our heart and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, protect in the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord protect us from jealousy and division in our churches. In the name of Jesus. Save us from Lord, jealousy Jesus. and division. As we pray, let us invite the Holy Spirit to guide us in the name, name of Jesus. Lord, guide us let in our worship tomorrow and after tomorrow Spirit in Lord, every of our worship. Of us, Lord, help us, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Guide us, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, guide us in every of our worship in the name of Jesus. We are praying. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this hour together. For studying your word and this kind of scripture together, be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray at every junction we have been instruments of division in your body, instrument of division in our services, instrument of confusion, comparison, rivalry in our churches. Instrument of gossip in our churches, in our services. Lord, we pray you forgive us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a driver of order, Amen. structure, Amen. peace, Amen. unity, harmony, Amen. and the Amen. Of our in, the, in our worship services, in the name of Jesus Christ. Chaos, Amen. confusion, disorderliness, disorganization, lack of structure, we rebook you in our churches and services, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we are praying. Amen. Amen. More anointing, sir. I'm very, very sure that every of our viewers across the globe have been blessed wonderfully to tonight's teaching. Uh, we thank God for your life, sir. And we thank God for the Christian education department of our church. If there's any department that needs your prayer, that need your continuous prayer, that is the Christian Education Department of our church. May the Lord continue to empower you, sir, and lead you to lead the department in the right direction in the name of Jesus. Uh, the only question we have here, you have attended to the question. I'm so sure that the person that has the question for Mola Shuk or Femi, you have attended to it, so we don't need to go back um, to it um, again. So thanks so much, uh, viewers across the globe. Thank you for watching our CAC Sunday School uh, preview. That is Moment of Truth. Thank you so much for watching tonight. And don't forget to always join moment us on all our programs. Sorry, Moment of Revelation. Moment of Revelation. Thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to always join us in all our programs on Sundays, on Mondays. On Monday, we hold Bible study preview. On that same day, we hold our prophetic hour with CAC General Evangelist. While well, on Tuesday, we hold Moment of Truth with CAC General uh, CAC uh, President. Pastor Enzo Oladile. Thanks so much for watching tonight. So I can pray for us as we close tonight. Let us pray. God, we thank you through our Lord Jesus Christ for the privilege to receive from you again. Lord, I pray that everything we have received from you, O Lord, every truth you have deposited in us will remain permanent and will be able to apply appropriately in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, your word will help your church even as we come together in all our churches all over the world to discuss Amen. this main topic, your main lesson tomorrow, let there be a revival of order Amen. of uh, orderliness of, uh, of uh, structure of peace, of unity Amen. Of Amen. Of in our churches, so that with our churches will, will enjoy your presence better in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Father. Amen. Satan, thank you, Lord. Lord. Whatever you are planning to Amen. do with this lesson tomorrow in the heart of people, you are a book permanently in the name of Jesus Christ. Confirm Amen. your word, Lord. Even the one we are tonight and the one in our services tomorrow. Confirm your word, Amen. Lord. 
Amen. We are prayed. Amen. Amen. I'm very, very sure that you have been blessed to tonight's ministration. Join us next week, Saturday, for another edition of Moment of Revelation, where we preview this on the school lessons of Christ Apostolic Church. I'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen.